BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Interest rates are rising. If you have variable interest rate loans, such as an adjustable rate mortgage or a home equity line of credit, now might be a good time to lock into a good rate. If you have credit card debt, come up with a plan to get it paid off as soon as possible. Or see if you can get a better rate at another lender to speed up the repayment process. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. A backup singer. Ooh, singer. When you have the Farmers Signal app with Crash Assist. Crash Assist. If you have an auto accident. We can send help if you want it. Wow, that sounds like a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There was a survey that found that the average person has something unexpected and good happened to them three times a week. And I love surveys like this because, look, we're human beings. We can tell you all the bad stuff that happens to us, but very rarely do we ever focus and can put in our brain as much the good stuff. We just sort of take it, we take, take, take it for granted. So I love that they went out there and found out, okay, by the way, this boost in happiness we get, I'm very surprised. It lasts an hour and 14 minutes. That's okay. not, that's not bad. You know what I mean? Like something good happens yeah. to you, and you're going good for an hour and 14. I like that they actually had, like, I mean, I, I hope, I'm picturing someone with a stopwatch and something good happens. All right, let's go. Let's see how good this goes till. And then finally you get pissed off and say, like, damn it, 70 minutes. Yeah. That's all I got. And Steve, if you don't get the first one, I'll be surprised uh, because I feel like this is something that you really do like a lot. Like this makes you happy. Free samples at an ice cream shop. Okay, I should have realized there's more. Ooh, yeah. there's yeah. more than that. That's good. Well, when you're stuck in line at Molly Moon and you're in that waiting, it was before, obviously, they were back when they were open, and you're waiting and you're waiting, and then the lady that works at Molly Moon comes out with a tray of samples. Oh, see, I'm that way with Krispy Kreme. Okay. Because they, they, they would do that sometimes, too, and it would be oh. like right out. The batch would be warm and just melting. Oh, Oh, how about this one? Oh, so it says so a perfect good. straw puncture on Capri Sun pouches. None of that. That We've doesn't that exist. <laughs> oh, dude. That moment. I have to say that, yes, I get what everybody's talking about and still very, very specific. And But if it makes you happy, cool for you. Little win. Uh, happened to me yesterday. A couple of days ago, Rev spotted me doing it, too. All right. When you guys, I think, were recording Geek Nation last week. I was doing the dishes, dried up, big wad of paper towels, and just took the shot. I mean, far from our garbage. Yeah. Little hole, swish. Oh, nice. Yeah. I left in such a good mood. <laughs> he was so happy. You know, I'm looking at all the lists, and as usual, Steve, uh, you are really not on there. Though I'm trying to look I for mean, three dude, it was like, I look like, I mean, it was like straight up like like Jordan, man, the way I hit that. Yeah, you were yeah. just like I, uh, Jordan. Just, yeah, just like totally. Jordan. Yeah. I'm, I, the ESPN's going to do a special on you, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they yeah, should. They the, really should. The last wad of paper towels. And they'll have to give you an iPad, and you can laugh at everything that you're watching on it as well. well yeah, when some yeah. Sonic players try and say they did it better, I'll just yeah. laugh at them. <laughs> um, Steve, number one on the list of things that instantly make us happier, these little wins that will give us an hour and 14 minutes of joy, finding money in the pocket of an old coat. Yeah, yeah. Or, we just talked about that yesterday. That's why I thought you'd get it. Yeah, you're right. I, <laughs> I, was, I really thought uh, you'd you get tried, it. man. You tried. I really did. I figured that it would be... You love that. I do. I do, man. There are times when we like we have to go somewhere where I have to put on like nice pants, and I almost always find something in those pants because I just you know I I must have not washed them clearly. Well, you don't wear them much. There's no, no reason to wash them. I folded them, put them back in the closet. Yeah, you know, pull them out. Sounds yeah. good. Put my hand in the pocket. I'm like ten dollars. 
awesome. Getting it is. It, it brings you back to being a little kid when you found money. I really mm-hmm. believe that's what it is. Even though you have your own money and ten dollars does not mean as much as it used to when you were little. But when you were little and you found money, that's like you know, it's like buried treasure. It's like such a great feeling. What about this for a little win? Getting an extra McNugget. Oh, or yeah. Or the onion ring in your fries. Yes. Yeah. Or the curly fry in your regular order of fries mm. from Jack in the Box. So here's what we're finding out. The people in this top 10 list obviously have different eating habits than us because that's not on there. And yet I can't disagree with anything you two said. Yeah. All yeah. this. Or yeah. just like when they just really just like stuff your bag with the fries. Like Dix does a great job of that. Where like Five guys just, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where they're like, I mean, it's they're trying to fit like a 10 pound ball in like the size of like a. A little purse or something I'm gonna, like that. I'm going to put that under number three, <laughs> even though it's not what number three is, but it, part of it is getting Uh-oh. an unexpected gift. I think that's an unexpected gift. Yeah. They're talking about getting an unexpected gift in the mail. Um, when I, like, you've talked about it too, Steve, where you buy so much stuff sometimes you forget what you're getting. Yeah. And I had that happen yesterday because I totally forgot I bought a game. And so I was like, oh, there's another box here. It's probably what did I order? Some like some sort of like household items or whatever. And when I opened it up, I was like, oh, I forgot I ordered this. And it was like, woo, party time. Or even like this morning, unexpected gift. Vicky's dad, Juan, hooked me up with a thing of Kit Kats. Oh, oh. Whoa. Yeah. See, now wait a second, Vicky. Hey, Steve doesn't complain. You complain. Uh-huh. But I mean, see, I would never complain about Kit Kats. Those are delicious. You, I yeah. thought they were the Sour Patch choosers, connection. Man. Yeah. If you're going to be a jerk about like a, one nice thing, oh, you have to. Oh, fruit snacks you know, suck. Yeah. You have yeah, to be Yeah, you cool. don't get wow. them anymore, man. So I guess vengeance is real. I don't know if that's vengeance. It's just I think his he's buddy. just rewarding the guy that appreciates his greatness. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know what? Mm-hmm. Look who just came Great at father. me. Father, yeah. look who came at me right off the bat with the spiteful remark. Okay, Vic. I'm I'm the one that's tell spiteful. My dad's yeah. a saint. Yeah, well, you yep. tell you and I your agree. father. Now it's on. He's my child. I'm going to gift everybody, but the Vicky family. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Well, have fun not getting Kit Kats. Hey, ever. what are you complaining for? You're going to get something. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number two is something that I wonder. I mean, look, Seattleites obviously have lived here and even people that have moved here they like the weather so when the ne- the next one here is called waking up to nice weather that's number two i think you could argue if you're a seattleite loving the gray that that's nice weather to you so for me waking up to a day like the way it is today oh, is great. awesome i love it but i know i've got so many friends that you know that either moved here and love the weather the reason why they moved here or of course folks that have lived here their whole life that they don't like this at all they would rather wake up to the gray yeah i mean sometimes it's nice cuz then you're like oh it's just like a stay at home kind of you know enjoy comfort food kind of weather but we get it so much that i'm just that i'm never going to be appreciative of that i'd rather have the sun yeah, I, I see. It's funny. My wife, uh, living down in Southern California, they get what's called the May gray and the June gloom, where they wake up to Seattle weather and then it turns into California weather by noon. Oh, it's like a gloom tease. Yeah, and that to me is what I like. I I would love that. It's like then you got the nice relaxing morning. You can be lazy because it's gray. Because I've heard Sarah talk about this and other people who are active, they feel guilty if they're not active on a sunny day. And so if you've got a lot of sunny days, you don't get to really yeah. get downtime. Yeah, my wife gets a little anxious if we don't go for a walk of some sort if the sun is out. It doesn't even matter what the weather is like. It could be 50 degrees out, but if it's sunny, that means, okay, we could take Lulu for a walk. We can enjoy the, we could bundle up, whatever it may be. Yeah. Rev, how about you? What is something that you think is a little wind that makes you happy? Uh, something along the lines of the nice weather was when the, uh, when my wife got, uh, the hammock for our backyard. Because I was like, oh, whatever, it's just a hammock. And then I like just chilled out and laid in it for like four hours this week. Yeah. It was amazing. Like just like the sun beating on me and the way it just the way it was positioned, I didn't get completely like sunburnt or anything. And it was just perfect. I just relaxed, I chilled out, and I just took a little bit of a nap. Oh yeah, a hammer a hammer in the a hammer. A, a hammock, hammer. A hammock in the shade where the weather is still warm enough that yeah. you're not like, you know, not burning, but it's also cool enough that you're comfortable and you still get to see all that great sunshine. Oh, it's a game changer. Yeah. I mean that I I know people don't realize if you got a nice, you know, if you made your backyard the way you want to, a hammock is just like forget about it. Mm-hmm. So, uh we've got number 4 and I think we go uh, getting into a bed with fresh sheets. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it's every Sunday for us. Oh, and you and like it puts every you in a good Sunday. mood, like for an hour, oh, according to this thing, which is really something. I mean, that's a little bit of a stretch. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good food. mood just when the minute I get into bed, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome, feels good. But then I, then I just move on to try and fall asleep. I'm not gonna stay oh. up for an hour to, to ride the wave. 
Oh, you don't make the bed and then if it's like fresh sheets, just jump in to get that fresh feet, fresh sheet feeling. No, because you're getting no, it dirty. What kind of weird world are you in, man? Well, because it's fresh sheets, you still can make the bed once you get it, once you get in. Like you put the sheets on and then you just get in the sheets and then you can go ah, and then you get out of it and make the bed fully. Right? No, nobody does that. See the full- do you do that? Well, that's because yeah. I know fresh <laughs> sheets feel great, but I you know what I mean. I want to be able to enjoy that feeling and then go on with my day. Like tell my brain I'm going to feel good without waiting for bedtime. It's like, a, it's like a brain hack. No, I'm the only yeah. one. All right. See, for me, like, I'll get in the shower. You got to shave, wear clean pajamas, and then get into the like freshly made, fresh sheet bed. All right. Not that it'll ever happen to me, but I hear freshly shaven legs and a fresh set of sheets is the best feeling Oh, ever. my God, yes. I it's just, just saw like, somebody just post want, about that. You like, gotta shave your legs. Do it, Steve. Yeah, do it. You got to try, try it, man. I am not shaving my legs. I'll be that one person that tells you you probably shouldn't. Why? Yeah. No one's going to see his legs. No, it's the freshly- stubble growing back is going to be itchy. Yeah, I don't need it. Why do I got to go through that? Well, for the pleasure of, of what it feels like. I'm just going to take my take the word of my friends that do it and Mickey right. as well. Yes. Uh, okay. It's magical. So he says losing to a guy uh, on the radio and then get trolled for, into an implosion. That's for good for about 35 minutes. Oh, hi, oh, Dakota. Like Dakota. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's a good feeling. I like this one because I think I take it for granted, but it is true. Traffic lights that turn green as you're approaching. I was about to say... When you're heading home and all you hit are green lights. Nice. This is the greatest feeling because it feels like anytime I'm in a rush to get home, like if I have to pee and I'm like really just kind of like racing that, like, oh, come on. And I hit every red light. You're like, you have got to be kidding me. Or like, is somebody effing with me right now? Like, I just hit a red light. I go two blocks and I'm in another red light. Stupid. <laughs> see, you're not remembering the good feeling, buddy. No, that's the worst feeling. Yeah, see? You got to remember the good feeling. Danny, uh, anything at all for you that, could, that, that little win in life that ha- makes you feel good for, you know, they say, for an hour and four minutes? I wouldn't necessarily call it a win, but getting to watch the sunset every night when there Danny, is a sunset. That was, that was the next one on my list. No. That was the really? next one, number six. Whoa. Dan. Danny, you are like crazy, <laughs> that, crazy psychic. That's me and like Lily's thing. We and we just like to get up and or, or get up, get up on the rooftop and watch the sunset in New Mexico when I'm able to go and stuff like that. It's just it's such like a calming thing where we yeah. just get to talk about our day and stuff. It's just so great. It's not like Hawaii because their sunsets really fast and I get bored easily. So it's just like okay, it's not like watching paint dry. It's like you blink and it's done. Dude, talk about so the. It's like, oh, this is so cool watching the sunset three seconds later. All right, let's do something. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so I want to. some dessert. I want to tell you, Steve, and I owe this to you. Uh-oh. Okay. I owe this to you. Look, we all have our heroes in life, and they say never meet your heroes, but sometimes you're lucky enough to do it. And, um, you know, I'm in the radio business because I just loved one show uh, that I grew up with, which was the big show in Boston on a rock station like KISW. And uh, it was Charles Laquadera. Steve set it up so that Charles could be on the show for an anniversary I want, I had for doing radio here in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And Charles said, hey, if you're ever in Hawaii, which is where he lives, and damn, he's doing pretty well. He actually sold a house to Oprah. Um, he said he did. He basically bought a house, and then Oprah came a-calling, and he was able to make a nice little situation. Situation when Oprah wanted his house. Did she just, just trash the house and rebuild it? Uh, probably. I, think. Yeah, I, yeah, say, I, can, I, I, I can't I, imagine Oprah's like going into someone's previously owned home when she's got that kind of cash. And uh, so I, I took him up on his offer. He said, hey, you're out to Hawaii. I went to his place in Hawaii. We visited. And he, t- he said, hey, would you like to be part of my evening ritual? And I'm like, I have no idea what this is all about, but you're my radio hero. And Steve, he and his buddies get together every night. They bring a bottle of wine out to the beach and they sit and watch the sunset and have a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. And, and that is his life, which yeah. is... You I would talk, do that in Hawaii every oh, night. I mean, I, it was fantastic. I, I really thought, dude, I don't see how life could get much better than this. It's sunsets for short attention span people. Yeah. Hey, Dave, have you ever been to Hawaii? I have not. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm, it's not even a joke. I know. In... 30 seconds, the sun is down. That's awesome. It's ridiculous. It's like, oh, sun's going down. And then you, like, you look down at your food because you want to cut like a piece of steak or whatever. And you look back up and you're like, it's already down. It's gone. It's done. I missed it. Yeah. It's insane, dude. It's that equator living, baby. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU 
is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a farmer's home policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers minded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So the John Wick movies... You know, the titles have been yeah, pretty straightforward. It's like, hey, this is John Wick. But we remembered it. We know yeah. what we're talking about. Uh, you'd think maybe it's marketing genius. Maybe they knew that people just, you know, this is how they wanted their movies labeled. Oh, yeah. It's John Wick, John Wick Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and Chapter 4. Yeah. And uh, that's what you would think is like, oh, all right. I wonder what marketing genius really thought that this was the time to be able to call movies that. And that wasn't the case. It was just Keanu Reeves couldn't remember the name of the movie. It had a different name. The first John Wick movie was supposed to be called Scorn. Okay. That was the name of the movie, but he kept forgetting the name. And one of the screenwriters says, quote, yeah, the only reason it's called John Wick is because Keanu kept referring to it as John Wick. He would never call it by its name. I wonder if it would have been as successful if it was just called Scorn. I mean, it, a good movie is a good movie. I get that. But to make it memorable, it's really the John Wick is what makes me remember that film. And also remember the title character, because otherwise I wouldn't remember what his name is in the film. I'm like, oh, he's the guy that shoots people because his dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, the whole John Wick thing, what makes it great, I think, is because of the name. And it's funny because I think that that did start a trend. If I'm not mistaken, Jack Reacher, the movies came after John Wick, as well as, of course, the Jack Ryan, which is the name of that Amazon show that uh, John Krasinski's in. And I don't think we would have had names of, well, of things. Born, born Identity. Yeah. Or, but I lose track of uh, what the other ones are. Yeah. Honestly, I think it would have made more sense for them just to be calling it Jason Bourne Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and so on. <laughs> See, yeah, Keanu. I don't know if Supremacy became before the Identity. Yeah. Or the, don't forget the Conspiracy. Right. Or the Ultimatum. Or colonoscopy. Yeah. I mean, Whoa. there's been a lot of weird... That colonoscopy was a tough one. The, the Boring Colonoscopy yeah. one was really good. Yeah, that should have been the last movie. If, <laughs> Some know. say it stunk. I didn't. Do it. Hey! <laughs> wow. Uh, the first Jack Reacher movie came out in 2012, and John Wick 1 came out in 2014. Oh, so... So how about Jack Reacher was before? Well, let's not forget the OG. Rambo. Rambo. Oh, yeah. Well, that was actually... The first one was First Blood. Yeah. Mm. And then then they just said, screw that. Let's just call it Rambo. You're right. And that made it... I mean, everyone forgets First Blood as far as the name is concerned. But then it got confusing because it's like, then you have Rambo 2, but technically it's Rambo 3. You're right. I mean... Not with John Wick. John Wick is John Wick 1, 2, 3, Parabellum, which, by the way, I don't know how, how would you, Keanu remember Parabellum. I don't think he did. It was just John Wick at the beginning, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, even think about Indiana Jones. The first one was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Right. And then they were like, Indiana Screw Jones it. and the Temple of Doom, and they had his name in it so they, everyone could realize that, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I mean, I honestly don't think John Wick would have been as successful if it was called Scorn. I agree. I totally agree, and I think the fact that Keanu just was, you know, it, I, call, call him whatever you want to call him, he just, his brain said, it's John Wick. I just love that he couldn't remember the name of the movie when it was just one word, and it was Scorn. The marketing director deserves <laughs> a lot of credit because he noticed that, hey, if this is a lot of free advertising, and he's calling it John Wick, we need to change the name of the movie. And it makes the name so memorable. Yeah. And that's kind of what they did with Harley Quinn with the Birds of Prey movie, because it was yep. just called the Birds of Prey, and then, you know, the Emancipation of Harley Quinn, but they mm-hmm. changed it what, when it came out. And it makes more sense, because she's already an established character, and no one's going to know what Birds of Prey is. It sounds like a, one of those Disney kind of uh, shows that has that's narrated by uh, you know Morgan Freeman or something about birds. And for me, as, for a, Star, the, as a Star Trek fan, I just keep thinking because it was one of the ships of one of the aliens. So it, that's every time I heard Birds of Prey. It makes me think of the tag team from um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. What were they, oh, what did they yeah. call themselves? Wasn't it like, like the something birds? Oh, I don't know. 
That's yeah. I'm trying to find out. I know that it was based off of the uh, Eagles. Birds of War. Birds, Birds of War. war. That's it. And yeah. they looked like eagles. Yeah. And I was so bummed when I realized the movie wasn't about them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, that's like my favorite. Oh, Grandma, I'm wrestling dork, but that's like my favorite um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode. <laughs> well, there you go. It just goes to show you how Birds important it war. is to name a movie the right name. It's yeah. So, it's so important. And some people get really mad when they go, you know what? I, you know, it, like, would Game of Thrones be as cool if it was actually called the book title A Song of Fire and Ice? I feel like Game of Thrones just sounds cooler. And it's from, I guess it's, it's, it's a passage that's actually in A Song of Fire and Ice, so I think Cersei says it, but what a, what a great idea that somehow somebody in marketing said, no, this is what we should call this, rather than what the book says it is. All right, I, I just came across a, a website that listed some of the original movie titles for films that ended up becoming super oh, successful. Oh, I like cool. this. Okay. Okay, so Back to the Future. It was originally going to be called Spaceman from Pluto. Oh, funny. So, Spaceman from Pluto? Yeah, when he went into the, the, the barn, uh, when he traveled back in time, oh. and he was dressed up in the space suit. Oh. And that was, I think, maybe that was the book title that his dad actually wrote when he came back and they changed uh, the future. Oh, oh, really? I, didn't, yeah, I know think what I, it might have been. I got to check that out. You're right. I remember his dad became a sci-fi writer. Yeah, w- the, with the changed future. I guess the head of Universal thought that the word future would be a turnoff for the audience. A turnoff? Yeah. And you meanwhile, Back to the Future is such a great title. And Spielberg came up with that name as a joke, kind of like, and but then he got a kick out of it. Well, good for Spielberg, because yeah. that's a, I mean, I, I, that is a great name. It's just really clever. Now, I mean, I, the movie Unforgiven. Yes. It was going to be called The Cut Whore Killings. Okay, Whoa. that does not sound as good that's as That's the Gene Hackman Western. Wow. Weird. Yeah, yeah, we don't need that. All right, what about, uh, what do you think Pretty Woman, the original name was going to be for that? She's the, a whore. Yeah, she's some, a whore. <laughs> yeah, the cut whore she's that didn't whore. get killed, she's right? She's a whore. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> $3,000. Oh, that was the price. Ooh, $3,000. I think, I think Pretty Woman's a way better name. Yeah. Yeah. We got another one? Uh, yeah, Reality Bites. Remember that film? Oh, yeah, I remember that they one. They were going to call it The Real World. Oh, isn't that bizarre? Yep. And then there's an MTV show that was really popular with that name. Uh, Casablanca. Oh, that's a classic movie. Everybody comes to Rick's. And they're not talking about the lake. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I mean, that is true. Lake City pl- that's lake part City of the club. movie. <laughs> yeah. But, boy, Casablanca does sound a lot more exotic. That is so funny. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm trying to see what other ones here we got. Uh, American Pie. What was that going to be called? Okay, they would just try to be ironic and silly. They were going to call it the teenage sex comedy that could be made for under $10 million that your reader will love but the executive will hate. <laughs> I love that name, but yeah, it's going to be tough to sell that. <laughs> and then yeah. it was also temporarily given the name East Great Falls High. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, you know, Pulp Fiction? I, well, yeah, what was that going to be called? Black Mask. Oh, because of the gimp. gimp. Yeah. Oh, See, I'm glad they called it Pulp Fiction because Black Mask is only a part of that movie. You know what I mean? It's like, it shouldn't be the name of the whole movie. So much more is going on in that movie than that. What about, did you know that The Revenge of the Jedi had a different, I mean, Return of the Jedi had a different name? I bet I know what it's going to be. <laughs> <Revenge of> Jedi. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you're right at that moment. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that. I like that they, yeah, it was Revenge of the Jedi, but then I think they realized that the, the Jedi are not about revenge, but the return is much better. It re, it, when in reality, because Luke is, in fact, now a new Jedi. Like, he's the first Jedi in years, and so that was a much better name. And it also was, it, it had double meaning, mm-hmm. because Anakin returned and became a Jedi. He became a Force ghost at the end of the movie when he redeemed his father. So that literally was a return of the Jedi as well. So it was a great title. I, either would work. Well, except revenge would not be like applicable to the end of how oh, it ended for his father. Point. Okay, fair. Yeah. yeah. How about Saturday Night Fever? What was that going to be called? The Tribal Rights of the New Saturday Night. Yeah, I think they went with a better call. Yeah. Granted, that's what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Saturday Night Fever's better. Hancock. I don't even care, but okay. Well, oh, hater. I hate that movie. I really do. This yeah. is so, I mean, I feel like they could have had a lot of fun parodies already with the name Hancock, but uh, this one was, originally was going to be called Tonight He Comes. Oh, yeah, well, maybe not. right off the car song, which is Tonight She Comes. Okay. Uh, what about Basic Instinct? Oh, that's the the Bunny Boiler? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Like the, with the well, where he has an affair and then and, things get crazy. And Sharon Stone basically uncrosses her legs and and ruins all the tracking on uh, VHS tapes. Is uh, it going to be called Love Hurts? 
Oh, well, that would have been good, too. But there was another movie called Love Hurts, right? Somewhere. Probably. Yeah. All right, how about Big? One of Tom Hanks' greatest movies. Oh, and again, had Jackie Gleason, who you, a lot of people don't know, but he was a great comic. And oh, I'm sure a, he was in Family Guy at some point. Yeah. yeah Jackie Gleason? Yeah. Pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> yeah. See, Vicky only knows everything from Family. Thank it's you, amazing. Seth MacFarlane. It's amazing. Like, yeah. If you want to know anything about like 80s, 70s pop culture, just watch Family Guy. Yeah. In this case, it was 50s pop culture. True. Yeah. Uh, it was supposed to be called When I Grow Up. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that makes sense. Oh, man, I don't know if I would have liked Child's Play, which is also another film that eventually said, screw it, let's just go with the name of the title character, which is yeah. Chucky. But uh, the original Child's Play was supposed to be called Batteries Not Included. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of fun. And I feel like there was a movie. There was, there was a movie called Batteries Not Included. Oh, isn't that funny? Huh. There's a show on Netflix that is now called Lovesick. And? But the original name, I kid you not, was Scrotal Recall. I remember the name. Yeah. I actually watched the, the I whole series. That's a really good show. It's really good. It's about a guy who gets an STD, and so he has to go and contact all his exes that he's hooked up with, and they kind of tell, like, you know, they go into uh, was it flashbacks to tell the story about each of these exes, and it's actually really interesting. I it's got fun. news for you. I mean, it's I, got a lot of characters from Misfits. Yeah. Oh, that's actors. cool. I um. You know, I don't know if, uh, if if a lot of the female targeted audience would have gone for Scrotal Recall, but I think I Steve and I would have at least given it a shot. That's why I, I heard watched it, it. And I wanted to watch it, and I forgot about, all about the show. I didn't know that they changed the name to Lovesick. Yeah. It's still on Netflix. Nice. I'll have to check that out. Scrotal Recall. How about uh, Breakfast Club? You won't believe what they were originally What were they going to call that? The Lunch Bunch. Oh, my God. <laughs> I almost said The Brunch Bunch. The Lunch Bunch. Oh, my God. Boy, Breakfast Club is such a cooler name. Yeah. Which, I don't know why it sounds like it's a cooler the name. The Lunch Bunch sounds way too cheesy. Yeah, it's very much Brady. And you think of the Brady Bunch and all that. Yeah. yeah it's Yeah, that, uh, that that's was a good so, call. That's so funny, though, because John Mulaney has a Netflix special called The Sack Lunch Bunch, and it's like a, it's almost like a Sesame Street type show, but it is, it's John Mulaney, and it's just hilarious and not necessarily for kids, and it's really good. Okay. I like it. You got one more. Okay. E.T. What the hell was that going to be called? Night Skies. Oh, that is lame. Yeah. Night nice Skies? So la- no, Night Skies. Oh, not Nice Guys. Yeah. That's lame. Uh, E.T., the extraterrestrial. I mean, that, that's, that's what made that movie like worth seeing as we were all like, you know, okay, space, man. Let's see some space movies. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, something about Mary? What were they going to call that? Something about Sarah. Originally, the title character was going to be named Sarah, but they went with Mary instead. They thought they, they had a better ring to it. Something about Mary. With an H or without an H? Oh, yeah. That would have been different. Uh, with an H. Oh, oh that's sorry. why they got rid of it. Yeah. That's the only way you should spell it, right, Sarah? Yeah, S-A-R-A. H. <laughs> oh, whoa. You just – now that's Steve. I wouldn't <laughs> oh, tr- she just gave me the psycho look. Uh, be careful of that coffee machine out there now. You just started it. That's all I'm going to say. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, Chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, Chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, You'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before uh, your case is even over. Uh, Chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three, three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So Chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. You will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.